Well, hello and welcome to this week's episode of On Deck with Avoya, your weekly travel update. I'm your host, Chris Green, Director of Network Expansion, and we very much appreciate your time for tuning in today. We also wanted to say a big thank you to everybody that continues to reach out uh, with your wonderful words about our Milestone 100th episode uh, with Jeff Anderson. There was a press release that went out about that yesterday. So again, thank you to everybody that's reached out and your congratulations. It certainly means a lot. We have a wonderful show lined up for you today as we welcome back one of our favorite guests from the past, Mickey McBride, Associate Vice President of Strategic Partnerships for Avoya. Uh, we've got an Avoya Insider segment today all about partnerships and, and the value of that and what it brings to the table both for Avoya Travel and for you as a travel advisor, especially those that end up joining the Avoya Network, right? Mickey and I just returned from Fort Lauderdale, Florida and the 2023 Avoya Travel Supplier Summit. So I look forward to getting some great updates from Mickey as relationships with the biggest vendors and cruise and river cruise tour all-inclusive. Certainly one of the big reasons that Avoya Travel is the number one host agency in the industry. And again, we can't wait to welcome back Mickey to the show here in just a minute. We're going to take a few moments today to look at some of the big stories impacting travel advisors this week in our Eye on the Industry feature. Some of the stories we're following include uh, JetBlue announcing they're scaling back summer projections, not for the number of people that travel, but the number of flights they're going to operate. And that's due to shortages in air traffic controllers. We'll have the latest there. Disney is taking off the gloves as they battle Florida Governor Ron DeSantis over the uh, control of Disney World. Uh, we'll have the latest there. And finally, Viking has taken delivery of their newest ocean voyage ship, the Saturn, and has announced who the godmother of the ship will be. We'll share all those details coming up here in just a moment. We'll also spend a few moments discussing our latest promotions for becoming an affiliate in the Avoya Travel Network. We'll spotlight the amazing travel agent education powered by Avoya platform, highlight some of the top resources for both new to the travel industry agents, as well as our experienced travel advisors watching today, and wrap up our show with all the ways that you can stay in touch with us here at Avoya Travel and hopefully reach out and get the process started to join the Avoya Network. So let's kick it off this week's episode of On Deck with Avoya, your weekly travel updates and industry insights and our eye on the industry feature. We appreciate our friends at Travel Weekly where we sourced all of our stories for uh, this week's segments. A uh, warning. Uh, warning that it expects challenges in the operating environment this summer due to air traffic controller shortages. JetBlue will reduce capacity for the peak summer period, the carrier's executive said uh, this week during JetBlue's first quarter earnings call. JetBlue is one of multiple carriers to take advantage of the FAA's voluntary 10% slot reductions for the peak summer period, particularly those in the New York region where air traffic controller staffing is at 54% of the FAA's target from 2014. Yikes. Quoting JetBlue President and COO Joanna Garethy, 54% is far short of where it needs to be to avoid significant disruptions and to accommodate the industry's growth, noting that the carrier is fine-tuning its summer capacity plans. But even with the cutbacks, we still expect challenges in the operating environment this summer. The FAA has said that delays are expected to vastly increase year over year. With JetBlue's large footprint in the Northeast, they are disproportionately exposed to those challenges. But come on, 54% of 2014 expectations, <laughs> expectations, I mean, in 2023, that's just kind of mind blowing. It's going to be a wild ride in the air this summer. Trust me, I just had to get across the country the other day. So make sure you have your plans in place for potential disruptions for clients and their schedules. I know one thing's for sure. I would scream and yell at any client wanting to fly in the same day as a cruise or tour started, especially in the summer of 2023. Disney sued Florida Governor Ron DeSantis on Wednesday over the Republicans' takeover of its theme park district, alleging the governor waged a targeted campaign of government retaliation after the company opposed a law in the, what was called Don't Say Gay. The lawsuit was filed in Tallahassee minutes after a Disney World Oversight Board appointed by the governor voted to void a deal that gave the company authority over design and construction decisions in its sprawling properties near Orlando. 
Disney regrets that it's come to this, the court case said, but having exhausted efforts to seek a resolution, the company is left with no choice but to file this lawsuit to perfect to protect its cast members, its guests, its local development partners from a relentless campaign to weaponize government power against Disney and retaliation for expressing a political viewpoint. The legal filing is the latest in more than a year-old feud between Disney and Governor DeSantis that has engulfed the governor in criticism as he prepares to launch what's expected to be a presidential bid in the coming months. Again, that's a story worth keeping an eye on. And finally, Viking took delivery of the 930 passenger Saturn on Wednesday at a shipyard in Italy. It's the brand's ninth ocean ship. They also announced that the chair of the Metropolitan Opera, Anne Ziff, will serve as the ceremonial godmother of the Viking Saturn, which will be named in the New York City ceremony on June the 6th. In addition to serving as the Metropolitan Opera's chair, Ziff is a jewelry maker, philanthropist. She sits on several boards, including the Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts. Following the naming ceremony, the Viking Saturn will sail two itineraries this summer, and they both sound amazing. The iconic Iceland, Greenland, and Canada itinerary, sailing between New York and Reykjavik, and the Iceland and Norway's Arctic Explorer between Reykjavik and Bergen, Norway. Right? Pretty amazing stuff. I know uh, Iceland is on my must-see list at some point. Okay, time for our weekly question and answer segment. And today it's all about partnerships and how those relationships make a vital difference for the affiliates in the Avoya Travel Network. To get the answers to these vital questions, we turn to our good friends and strategic partners, uh, partnerships once again for answers and some insight. So please help me welcome in our returning Avoya Insider guest, but now carrying that very fancy Associate Vice President of Strategic Partnerships title, Mickey McBride. Mickey, welcome back to On Deck with Avoya, my friend. Awesome. Thank you, Chris, for having me. You're too kind. It's great to be back. And congratulations in, uh, to you and the team for having over 100 episodes. I feel very honored Absolutely. to be number 102. Yes, indeed. We're happy to have you. I think you were, this is what, is your fourth time on? Third time? I don't know. You've been on several times, so you've eaten up a good percentage of that 100. We certainly appreciate your contributions to making that happen. And, and congratulations to you on your new promotion. Thank you. I really appreciate that. It's been an honor to lead an amazing team with strategic partnerships and work closely with and even a more expanded portfolio of preferred partners that best support the Avoid Network. So tell me a little bit about that, Mickey, how that changes your role a little bit and how the scope of how you uh, end up trying to make a difference for the Avoid Network. Yeah, it's a great question, Chris. So there are now uh, about 100 supplier partners that roll up underneath myself and our team. And so we're a strong unified team where uh, in the past, maybe there were certain segments of who works with which product types and partners. So it is uh, an exciting opportunity to make sure that from our cruise partners, our cooperative partners, our all-inclusive partners, and everybody in between is uh, make, making the most of what our capabilities are, uh, most of the education, the events that are provided to them to make sure that they are getting in front of the Avoid network. So. That's really the, the biggest change, I'll say. It's just a little bit more increased responsibility across the partner mix. And uh, it's been an exciting challenge to just kind of get acclimated back to some partners that I haven't worked with for a few years. Certainly well-deserved uh, for my eyes, Mickey. Before we dive into the deep end on our Q&A, can you give us maybe an abbreviated version, though, of what Strategic Partnerships does, like big picture, and how that kind of trickles down to impact those in the Avoyan network? Yeah, our ultimate goal is to be the number one partner for all of these amazing vendors that are uh, providing great products and experiences to our mutual guests. So what that looks like and how we try to achieve that goal is working closely with your team, other teams here within Avoya to make sure that the greatest, um, I'll say kind of potential levers that we have available within our platform and within the Avoya model are being pulled and reciprocated back in a way that best aligns with each partner's needs. And in some cases that could be marketing and the amazing live lead generation that our team does. In other instances, it's very intensive education and making sure that the Avoya network and our amazing affiliates have the utmost knowledge and resources available to them. So really we're kind of serving as that liaison between the partners and the amazing you know, teams that they have back down to the Avoya network and Avoya teams here um, within our marketing, 
our groups, all these amazing teams that are maybe more behind the scenes that you don't necessarily see as an affiliate or as a supplier partner. You know, I think in Mickey's answer there, he touched on like four or five just core resources offered by Avoya Travel that are huge differentiators for us here at Avoya Travel. He said live leads. He talked about our groups department. He talked about our amazing marketing. I mean, when you hear these words, hopefully it resonates within you and it causes you to want to reach out and start that conversation. You know, I had the great fortune of spending some time with you, Mickey, here in the in the last month or so, including last week in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, when we both attended the Avoya Travel Spring Supplier Summit. Tell me a little bit about those sessions and why they're important for Avoya Travel to hold. Yeah, it's been great being back on the road. I've had three weeks in a row of travel, so starting with the travel agent form in Las Vegas. It's great to see you there, Chris. And then uh, we had a few folks attend the Travel Weekly Leadership Forum in Hawaii. So we've got some great insight and uh, better understanding of what that market looks like with some key partners. And then last week being at Cruise 360 and hosting our Voya Travel Spring Supplier Summit. The summit's a great opportunity for us to get in front of these key executive partners from all these amazing cruise lines that we work with. And just to share updates about the great nuances that we are doing um, within our, our program, what lies ahead, and how we can best continue to partner with each other. Because there's so much positive momentum that we're seeing with things that we're doing, but there's also a lot of great things in store. And where our vision is to continue to grow, um, it's just always refreshing to be able to network with these partners, to be able to share different ways in which we can kind of continue to lead um, you know, the host agency channel. So very informative, a lot of great content that we shared, a lot of great things that are in the works uh, over the course of the rest of Q2 and into Q3. So very important for us to be able to get that FaceTime with, you know, the key decision makers of these great partnerships that we have. You know, as somebody who attended my first supplier summit, one of the things I was surprised at, and my takeaway was, was watching the light bulbs come on of some of these executives at the cruise lines. When we talk about how we're not just a host agency, but really a platform company. And we serve multiple partners and our and our independent affiliates, the consumer, and how it all kind of full cycles together. Exactly. Yeah, we're very different. And that's what makes our team in particular very different. It's because there are so many potential ways to work with each other to best support the Avoid network. And ultimately, if you know suppliers kind of fit us into just one bucket, and then we're missing the mark on greater opportunities and potential to grow our business together. So it's always refreshing to just have that time with our, you know, key uh, senior executives on our side. And again, get in front of key senior executives with the cruise lines. For sure. And then as a follow-up, these are kind of different, right? Than say an event where our Avoya network affiliates are interacting with our, our partners and our, from our vendorships, right? But we have lots of opportunities for that to happen as well the Avoya network to interact and create stronger bonds with our top vendors though, right? Absolutely. And that's what's different with the Supplier Summit. It's a great opportunity for us to tout about how amazing our Avoya network is. And then we have these in-person events, these virtual functions that allow these supplier partners to actually be engaging with the Avoya network and, and get that opportunity to, again, educate, increase their exposure, increase their awareness. And with that, there's so many different... Uh, I'll say movements that we've made over the course of the years. So we do have an amazing land forum that's going to be this kind of shining star of Q2. And uh, that's a new one that we launched back in 2019. And to see the trajectory and the growth that we've had, not just with the partners that are attending, but with the number of independent agencies that are interested in growing that percentage and that portion of their business. Um, you know, it's, it's very refreshing. And I'll say kind of humbling just to, see who we are as, a, as an organization and ultimately becoming, um, you know, more robust and well-rounded with our partnerships, with the products that we're selling. There's also great opportunities virtually. We just recently had an uh, independent agency, you know, new success event for all these great affiliates that are coming in uh, with your help, Chris, and, and uh, the marketing team, for them to be able to engage with supplier partners that they're probably going to be really focused on as they're starting their careers here with Avoid Travel. So. We try to make the most of our events based off the audience, uh, based on the partnerships and best align those and have to give a shout out to our amazing events team for putting it all together. I don't know how they go from one to the other. It's, it's truly incredible what they're able to pull off. No doubt about that. 
So, Mickey, you've been on the road now for a couple of weeks, you said. What's the word on the street from the vendors after what seems to be a pretty strong Q1 across the board in the travel industry? Yeah, a lot of record-breaking uh, you know, milestones. So, very exciting to be back full steam ahead. I think the demand is, is going to continue to rise. You know, there's obviously some concerns about the economic future and what that might mean, but I don't foresee a, a dip in demand while what we've seen over the last, you know, 18 to 24 months is maybe a higher uh, spend. You know, people are staying longer, maybe selling from the top down. There might be a little bit of a shift in the future with, um, with that from a vendor perspective is, you know, there might be, even more balcony sold instead of suites. But again, from a demand perspective, things are firing on all cylinders and a lot of great, um, you know, numbers to kind of celebrate, but there's still a lot of opportunities to grow further. And that's what's great about having these meetings with the vendors, getting in front of them again, and just being able to have those conversations about where they're at as a business, where we're out as a business and how we can continue to grow from there. I mean, when I hear you say that, it says to me that this surge in travel, it's got some legs. I mean, what's your personal feeling, Mickey, about how long this travel surge might last? Yeah, I think it, it's funny that you kind of touched upon air, you know, early to start the show. Air's the big kind of question mark, right? There's so much reliance on it. You've had some interesting air experiences. We had an interesting air story heading out to Florida and, you know, so many of these great products are reliant on what that experience looks like. So from, from kind of my experience and what the meetings have kind of shared, you know, there's still some nuances that we're all trying to work through on how to best make sure that from the point that somebody leaves their home until the point that they get home, how is that entire vacation as seamless as possible? So that's really, um, I'll say just kind of the one, the one thing that might, um, create a little bit of opportunities for us, but that's not going to impact the demand. It just might impact the timing and which bookings are being made, right? There's still so much uh, future growth and future travel being booked, but there's also still a lot of close in because there could be some amazing lift in air uh, in a relatively short period of time. So say it kind of starts, starts with there, but as far as a product perspective from a cruise line, from a resort, a tour, uh, there's not going to be a real big slowdown in travel. We're, we're here, we're back. I saw an article today, economic uh, impact report showed that the industry has reached a 95% recovery rate, you know, basically right back to where we were peak of, you know, pre COVID pandemic numbers. So it's incredible to see how quickly we've accelerated that as an industry. And that's why I don't think it's going to be slowing down anytime soon. I think what we need to do, Mickey, is we got to get Gina Hoyt, right? Who's the director of Avoya's travel education platform, who uh, runs the travel agent education powered by Avoya and see if she can start an air traffic controller school. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> that would be beneficial for everyone. And that's, what's great about touting, not just Avoya network, but the amazing work that your team done uh, has done, Chris, the amazing work that Gina has done. Uh, I mean, that, that was a, a shining spotlight with some of these meetings that we had with our partners, just to be able to best demonstrate to them how impactful Gina's work has been across, um, you know, our team, right? Like we're feeling the effects from a partnership perspective because it's very appealing for some of these partners to be able to get in front of advisors from the onset of their career. So we're, we're going to continue to look at ways to best make sure that from, um, you know, whether you've been selling for 20 years or whether you've been selling for two days, Know, our partnerships are going to be aligned with the best way to support their businesses. Mickey McBride, Associate Vice President of Strategic Partnerships for Avoya Travels, our featured Avoy Insider guest today. Uh, Mickey, for those that may be new to the industry, why is it important that the big cruise lines and tour operators, all-inclusive resorts, why is it important that they also want to be vested in a partnership with Avoya Travel? Yeah, ultimately, we do things differently, and we're very innovative, and to see the growth that we've had, as I said earlier, having about 100 partners to some capacity rolling up under our team uh, is a significant growth from where we were even just three or four years ago and the headway that we've made across new partners. There's amazing new products constantly being delivered out there across cruise, across resort. Uh, you know, tour operators are continuing to evolve and, and develop products that are well received and just seeing the NPS scores, which is how we track 
know, net promoter in the products um, continues to accelerate as we come out of this pandemic. It, it, it's, it's, uh, it's humbling. I'll say Chris, you know, and, and ultimately it's because of how valuable I feel that Avoya can be to a partner with what we can deliver with what the Avoya network can bring to these organizations and how much, um, you know, incremental growth that we can demonstrate to these partners, it's incredibly important for them to be able to tap into this model, to tap into an amazing elite network that sells more per agency than anybody else in the marketplace, right? Like you, I mean, it's, it's incredible work to see what they're doing. And I know I'm excited. We have some independent agencies actually in the office here today. We posted a lunch and learn with a key partner and uh, you know, for them to take the time out of their busy days to join, to continue to educate. It's very important to make sure that partners are getting in front of these advisors to get in front of the marketing machine that we have uh, with exclusive offers, with the capabilities that they're able to deliver. So I, I could go on and on about why it's important for partners to be working with us. Um, but I'll kind of save that maybe for the fourth call that we have together, Chris. Sounds great. Mickey, <laughs> help me help me clarify a little bit. When we say we're partnering with a vendor, what are we talking about? We're talking about special price. Are we talking about special add-ons for clients, special commission rates? I mean, what kinds of things are involved to help us understand a little bit more about how this helps the Avoya network to be competitive? Yeah, I love that question. Ultimately, what we want to do is be best in class. And, and that looks different to every partner. And again, that's kind of the fundamental goal of what we've tried to build within my team is how can we best maximize the partner uh, and their positioning with also within our platform and what we're able to deliver upon. So it could be special commission rates. You know, ultimately we are bringing in uh, top in class commission rates with these partnerships, looking at exclusive offers, bonus commission opportunities that are unique to Avoya, uh, different policies that might be uh, exclusive to what we're able to deliver. But it also kind of depends also on their level of engagement, right? So some partners are going to be really uh, instrumental with events. So like the land forum coming up, some partners are going to be really virtually and digitally uh, focused on education. So really, you know, how I define a partner is somebody that we have a relationship with that can best help support the Avoya network with service, financially, you know, sound commission rates, education, uh, policies, et cetera. Makes a lot of sense to me. What about you, Mickey, on a personal front? I mean, I know so many big changes have happened for you in the last couple of years, both professionally and in your personal life. How do those changes impact your like overall view of what's important in life? Yeah, I think ultimately what's important is balance. And being on the road again for the last few weeks, coming home, I have a, a beautiful six-month daughter. And uh, my wife is just an absolute champ to be able to... Um, one, I'm very fortunate to have that opportunity to represent Avoya, but two, more importantly, to be able to have that time that my wife can share with our daughter and um, hold it down while I'm gone. I know it's not easy. And I think that's the biggest change is just understanding kind of the priorities in life. And that's what's special about travel. I think why it's been booming so much is people cherish those moments, those experiences. And there's nothing quite like that quality time that you can share with your loved ones. And travel delivers that far more than anything material, right? And absolutely, that that's really been just kind of the biggest change uh, as I've grown here in my role, but also now growing within my family dynamic and units there. Mickey, every time you talk about your daughter, man, you got this little glow about you that just lights up the room. So congratulations on that. I mean, I'm Thank happy you. for you, just seeing how much happiness it brings to you personally. You know, yeah. I was speaking with I was speaking with Andy Craig, Associate Vice President of Marketing for Avoya Travel, a few episodes ago, about how having children impacts your your view of what kind of vacations you can and will probably take in the future. Do you feel that's happening to you as well? Absolutely, and we will actually be going on our first family vacation next week. Oh, so cool. we are going to Maui for seven nights with uh, my family and with my wife's parents with her brother and his family. So we've got two, two babies going on the, on the trip. 
it definitely changes the dynamic, right? Like for sure. we're trying to get out of the vacation, uh, whether it's being active or just kind of lounging on the beach is going to look different, but also very unique and I think exciting from a, a new adventure. Uh, the packing list is no joke. So <laughs> like that, that right there, I'll say that's, that's the biggest um, impact is, Okay, how many outfits do we need? What bows does she need to wear? She needs maybe four outfits for one day because you never know if there's going to be an accident. So <laughs> that's that's right off the bat. If Anne didn't cover cover that, um, I mean, like just the one suitcase for a child is is going to be doubling what I need uh, as a, an adult. So uh, jokes aside, I think the biggest kind of impact of what vacations look like is it's going to be experiencing thing through experiencing things through the eyes of her and for my wife and I to just have a completely different perspective on finding some of those moments for us to have right and um, you know pamper and treat ourselves but ultimately it's going to be seeing the joy and the happiness in getting her in the ocean you know we went to the beach here luckily to live here in San Diego kind of as a test run to see how it would work and just the joy that she has figuring out what, what am I stepping on? Like, what is this sand? You know, yeah. why is this water cold? Um, <laughs> totally will impact the vacation experience in, even in, I think, a more positive way. At least you don't have to check the rates of convertibles anymore. Huh. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Me, Mickey, you get to interact with so many members of the Avoya Travel Network or affiliates on a regular basis. What are some of the traits that you notice of those that end up percolating to be very successful in our industry? I think it's how invested they are in growing their business. And in order to do so, you know, they're, they're hungry, they're intelligent, they know um, how to best kind of work with our partners. Obviously, integrity and professionalism are the two pillars of, of our network. And what I love more than anything is hearing the positive feedback that we get from partners and how much they rave about their encounters and interactions with the Avoya advisor and the independent agencies just to be able to say, like, these, these folks are different, you know, and that speaks to kind of who they are innately, how they operate their business. And um, I think best maximizing like all the different resources that we have to provide while also looking at ways to continue to grow that like that that's what stands out to us we want to be able to know what is working and where can we improve to make sure that their businesses are continuing to grow and i think that's really a fundamental trait is just how they operate right like they're they're not just in it for the enjoyment of selling travel which is why we're all here but they're in it to you know, run a, a highly successful business and continue to grow. And that is so unique to Avoya. And um, I'll say it's just another kind of positive that we have in our arsenal when talking to partners about our network. It's just how, how they're wired, you know? For sure. No, I think that's a really important thing. I mean, you said some really important things in our conversation so far today, but I certainly think that's one of the big takeaways, what you just said about the traits to be successful uh, for people to pick up on today. Mickey, as we get ready to wrap up, I'm gonna ask my obligatory last question. Are you excited about the future of leisure travel? And, and has that changed at all since your last appearance with us here at On Deck with Avoya? You know what, Chris, I don't think it's changed as much. Uh, personally, I think professionally, just being back in, involved with uh, every single partner that we work with, you know, it's kind of opened some, some great insights and takeaways and um, further trends about just how special this industry truly is. And having that opportunity to work with such amazing partners um, gets me excited, you know, to hear what the partners are doing to make sure that the product is delivered exceptionally well. You know, how important the trade is to these partners has me super jazzed about where we're going to continue to grow as an industry and um, ultimately that excitement again, hasn't changed as much as it's just maybe more appreciated in terms of like being back involved with all these different amazing partners across the board. It's, it's 
absolutely incredible just what they're able to do day in and day out. And I hope that the independent agencies and the Boyd Network and future future affiliates just can kind of leverage into that and take advantage of all these great vacation products that are out there. Mickey McBride, everyone, Associate Vice President of Strategic Partnerships for Avoid Travel. Mickey, we always appreciate your insight, and we also appreciate all the great help you provide us in sourcing some of the industry's top guests. Yes, be on the lookout. We are working with a couple great partners, and Chris, I know uh, we have some some exciting ones that we can't can't announce yet, but I can guarantee you they will be ones that you will not want to miss. So thank you, Chris, for giving us that opportunity to get our key partners and key executives to be on call and just be able to engage with everyone here. Thank Sounds you all good. very much. Uh, it's always an honor to join you, Chris. Thanks again, Mickey. Great to see you, my friend. Thank you. Next week, as we kick off Travel Advisor Appreciation Month here at Avoid Travel, we welcome in our great friend, Stephanie Lee, founder of Host Agency Reviews for a Meet the Industry segment. We're going to talk about the history of host agency reviews and how that resource helps new and experienced travel advisors zero in kind of on who the best partner for their business might be. And we get to uh, pick Steph's brain on some of the important traits she sees in successful travel advisors. That's next Thursday, our normal time, 2.15 p.m. Eastern, 11.15 a.m. Pacific, right here for On Deck with Avoya. As we talk promotions, I'm excited to announce that we're carrying over Due to popular demand, our wait fee for a promotion for high-end experienced travel advisors. If you have documented sales of over $100,000 in the last year to date or in 2022, we want to chat. You know, cruise, river cruise, tour, all-inclusive, that vacation environment. If you qualify, and you should, if you, you know, hit that, that threshold, then we can't wait to welcome you into the Avoya Network. My team, more than happy to hear from you. Please reach out today at avoyanetwork.com and get that process started. And we're also continuing our ongoing and very successful promotion for the military and veterans community. We were taking $100 off the price to affiliate for those that serve currently, have served, and their spouses. And again, my team would be happy to go over all the details. Avoyanetwork.com is where you want to go for that. Travel agent education powered by Avoya, that platform continues to see amazing results. Listen, education is the key to success in almost every endeavor that is worthwhile. And we're certainly seeing that here. Those that have taken the education platform are outperforming those that didn't by staggering numbers. I mean, Gina Hoyt was just with us a few weeks ago. She shared us that amazing stat. They're closing leads at a 25% higher clip. Their volume is double that of people that, again, did not take the education platform. So why not? It's a no-brainer. So if you're new to the industry, this is your call to action to get all those details on the website, avoyanetwork.com. And we've got so many amazing resources too here at Avoya Travel, right? I mean, we have live leads, we have turnkey marketing assets, we've got support where you can pick up the phone and reach somebody seven days a week, the professional development, all the amazing relationships with the vendors that we were just talking about. So many great reasons for you to partner with your business with Avoya Travel and join the Avoya Travel Network. Again, we can't wait to hear from you. And we appreciate you, you know, viewing today. And we hope that you get a moment to follow us on all our social media platforms at Avoya Travel Network, uh, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn. Never miss a beat. Stay in touch. We've got some great updates and they're always there on our social media. Of course, you can reach out the old fashioned way. We've been hitting the website, uh, Avoya network.com. There's my email on the screen, chris.green at avoyatravel.com. Pick up the phone, give us a call. We just can't wait to get you connected with an affiliation specialist. A big thank you again to my special guest today, Mickey McBride, for that wonderful discussion. Again, thank you to Annabella from Trade Marketing. Thank you to the creative services team that kind of helped us relaunch with a new logo and everything as we move into our second 100 episodes of On Deck with Avoya. And a big thank you for making time to be part of this today. Until next Thursday, have a wonderful week, everyone.